Um, next, this is uh, Fire Prevention Month, so we have a proclamation which I would like to read. This is a proclamation declaring October 2020 Fire Prevention Month. Whereas Middletown Township is committed to ensuring the safety and security of all those living, working, and visiting our community, and whereas fire is a serious public safety concern, both locally and nationally, and homes are where people are greater, at greatest risk, and whereas home fires kill more than 2,700 people in the United States each year, according to the National Fire Protection Association, and fire departments respond to more than 360,000 home fires per year, and whereas working smoke alarms cut the odds of dying in a reported home fire in half, all residents should install smoke alarms and alert devices that also meet the needs of the deaf and hard of hearing in every sleeping room and on every level of a home. And whereas homeowners should test their smoke alarms monthly, as three out of five uh, home fire deaths occur in homes without working smoke alarms. And whereas Middletown Township's first responders are dedicated to reducing the occurrence of home fires and home fire injuries through prevention and protection education. And whereas the 2020 Fire Prevention Week theme, quote, serve up fire safety in the kitchen, end quote, effectively serves to remind us that we need working smoke alarms to respond to get out safely. Now, therefore, be proclaimed by the Board of Supervisors of Middletown Township, Bucks County, Pennsylvania, that October 2020 be designated Fire Prevention Month by the Middletown Township Board of Supervisors. Um, next, um, two other special announcements. First and foremost, I want to um, recognize um, a Veterans Park volunteer group um, we'd like to express our thanks to the Hotshot Power Washing team for donating their time and expertise to make the township more beautiful. Beautiful. Uh, the father and son team of Roger and Kyle Corbett from Highland Park have donated about 30 hours to power wash and scrub the walking areas around Veterans Memorial Park and the Chris Jones Memorial area at the Municipal Center. Um, the areas look fantastic and I see um, we have um, Kyle here and is Roger here as well? He's downstairs. Kyle, um, we're glad you made it here tonight. Um, it's great to see you. The areas look terrific. Uh, we can't uh, thank you and Roger enough and Hotshot Power Washing for giving back to your community. Thank you very much. Anytime. I, I love doing it. It's, it's nice keeping that stuff clean. Thank you. It makes a real difference. Anytime. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. And then we have one other uh, special announcement tonight. Um, we have a uh, special birthday to recognize. Original Levittown homeowner, Sophia Tusina turns 90 years old today. Sophia and her husband, Michael, moved to Levittown in 1957 when U.S. Steel opened. Michael was a disabled World War, World War II veteran who received the Purple Heart when he was shot in both legs at the Battle of Remagen in Germany. Sophia retired from the New Jersey Department of Labor in 1993, and she is currently an active member of the Middletown course and is a dedicated poll worker. So um, happy birthday, Sophia. Um, we're um, proud to honor you and um, welcome you to the meeting tonight and um, great to have you. Okay, that brings us to the consent agenda items. Item A, consideration of authorizing payment of October 5th, 2020 bill list in the amount of $387,267.56. Item B, consideration of approving the September 21, 2020 minutes of the public meeting of the Middletown Township Board of Supervisors. Item C, consideration of authorizing final escrow release for the marketplace at Oxford Valley Land Development. And item D, consideration of authorizing approval of payment request number one, for the 2020 Road Improvement Program to General Asphalt in the amount of $455,306.49. Is there a motion on the consent agenda items? Mr. Tosti. Make a motion to accept the consent agenda items as read. Thank you. Is there a second? I'll second. Thank you. There's been a motion and a second. Are there any board questions? Are there any questions from the public? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 It looks like we have one public comment. Okay. Up, oh, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. So um, we are on the consent agenda items. Do you have a, con a comment on the consent agenda items? And if you would just please state your name and address. 
Yeah, my name is Donna Salvucci. I live at 144 Pine Glen in um, Swan Point. And just to add, I, I suspect this is appropriate, just to add an agenda item, is this an appropriate time to do that? Um, we cannot add an agenda item at this time. So what we are doing right now is we're going through each agenda item. And if you have specific comments about a specific agenda item, um, you can make that following the item. So now would be the time to make comments on the four consent agenda items that we just read and the, the motion. Um, at the conclusion of the agenda items will be the public comment section where you can offer comment on anything you want, any, anything that's not on the agenda. Oh, okay, because I sent an agenda item earlier today for the meeting. So I would okay. say that's in the end. Well, so yeah, so the, you're, you're saying agenda item. So the agenda is released on Fridays for the Monday meeting. So the agenda was already publicly posted. So it wouldn't be an agenda item, but if you have a public comment, on an issue that's not on the agenda, you can make that during the public comment section at the end of the meeting. Okay, great. Thanks for the explanation. Sure. I'll make sure to get you back in then. Great, thank you. Okay, can we just do this one more time just to make sure we got it all? We had a motion and a second on the consent agenda items. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries 5-0, thank you. Um, next on the agenda, consideration of rejecting all bids for the 2020 Middletown Township Handicap Ramp Program. Uh, yes, Mr. Ennis. Yes, thank you, Chairman Kizak. Uh, yeah, we'd like to um, ask the board to consider um, rejecting the bids for the ADA um, ramp program uh, for this year's bid. Um, all the seven bidders uh, came in above the budget price. Um, so we ask at this point to uh, reject the bids and we'll look at uh, rebidding this uh, next year with the budget then. Thank you, Mr. Ennis. Um, are there any questions for Mr. Ennis or does anyone have a motion? Ms. Strauss. I move to reject all bids for the 2020 ADA ramp program, which were opened on August 28th, 2020. I'll Thank second. You. Thank you, Ms. Payne. There's been a motion and a second. Are there any board questions? I, I just have a comment uh, in talking to Isaac. He said that next year we're going to tie this in with the road program and see if we can get a better price on that with the road program tied in together. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. We're going to look at um, tying the ramps for 2021 and 2022 into next year's road programs to get a little bit ahead uh, as we continue with the roads um, to get this taken care of. And uh, so we'll put the road program out a little earlier next year to try to get this moving, um, you know, in February or March. This will be, be in the same development because of would the road program will go into there next year too? Yes, we're looking at the Georgetown development specifically okay. uh, for what just was bid, but that would be part of the 2021 roads. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Ennis. Um, there's been a motion and a second. Are there any questions from the public? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Carries 5-0. Thank you, Mr. Ennis. Next on the agenda, consideration of authorizing contract with Burns Mechanical for the replacement of the chiller. Back to you, Mr. Ennis. Yes, thank you. So yeah, we have the chiller that um, has been in uh, disrepair for quite some time and requiring a lot of maintenance uh, over the summer and uh, recent months. Uh, it's 20 years old. Um, there are two compressors. One of them uh, is not working currently. Uh, and the opportunity to replace it over the next few months uh, presents a, you know, a savings because we wouldn't need to temporarily chill the building as we do this. So we're, we're asking tonight for um, the replacement chiller and uh, for Burns Mechanical to do that, our HVAC um, contractor, who's very familiar with our system here. Thank you, Mr. Ennis. Um, does anyone have any questions about the purchase of the new chiller? And if not, I'll accept a motion. Mr. Tosti. Move to award a contract to Burns Mechanical Incorporated in the amount of $227,260 for the replacement of the chiller for the municipal building. Thank you, Mr. Tossi. Is there a second? I'll second. Thank you, Ms. Payne. There's been a motion and a second. Are there any board questions at this time? Seeing none, are there any questions from the public? 
Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Carries 5-0. Thank you again, Mr. Ennis. Thank you. Next on the agenda, we have our third quarter financial report. And for that, we have our financial director, Ms. Bendari. Ms. Bendari. Good afternoon, or good evening, everyone. Thank you so much. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, share my screen. Just give me one second here. All right, um, so I'm gonna go ahead and present to you uh, Middletown Township's Q3 2020 financial and present um, pension presentation. So overall, um, from a summary standpoint, um, we're currently at about 87% on the revenue side and about 60% on the expense side. Overall, um, you know, we're getting there, um, getting closer to budget, um, but, and Stephanie will actually talk about more about our projection um, later in the slides, but just wanted to kind of give you guys a, um, to give you guys um, where we're at at this point, um, as far as both, um, so overall, doing okay, um, we're able to keep the expenses down over the revenues that we're seeing. Again, here is uh, the revenues by category, um, just to give you more in depth, a more in depth look. Um, if you can see the bond is in here, so that, that does help on the revenue side. Um, real estate property taxes were about 98% um, there and earned income tax about 76%. We do um, anticipate more of our in income taxes coming up um, in the next three, three months. Um, we have outshined on the contributions from private sources. So you can see that we're doing really well there. Um, and um, with our sanitation, because um, we, we signed the new contract and some of our operating and capital grants. On the expense side, um, as you can see, we've really um, cut down, cut back on the expenses compared to the revenue that we're getting in, especially with COVID um, coming into play. We're trying our best to um, keep expenses down and um, utilize efficiencies in order to um, spend less um, as we, um, you know, watch our revenues. As far as our investments, um, we did have a CD with Malvern Bank that came to maturity on 9-5-2020. Um, in looking at the rates, we decided to move um, whatever we had back into PFM. Um, we were getting better, um, a better investment portfolio with PFM um, just because it was longer term um, investments and just a better portfolio range in general. So as you can see, um, we are definitely over the 40 million that um, we had gotten in from the sewer, sewer and um, water sale. Um, we're about 44 million 437,193, which is great. So we do have um, a little bit of a balance in there. We still have our Univest money market. Um, the interest rate has gone down to 0.25%, which is um, really low, but um, we've kept it there for, for the time being just to have a little bit more cash on hand in case we needed to pull back. From a pension standpoint, um, we continue to see um, growth. Um, last quarter, we had about 11%. This, uh, this time, we're about 6.1%. Um, but you know, still growth on that end, still um, you know, getting some interest um, overall. Not as great as second quarter, but we're still seeing um, you know, an increase overall. All right, any questions? I just wanted to give you guys all an overview before we head into budget um, in a couple of weeks. Thanks very much, Ms. Bandari. We appreciate the update. Sure. Um, and so I'm gonna actually pass it to, to Stephanie to talk about revenue projections. I just uh, wanted to make sure there were no questions on my end. Great. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Mega. So as we have been doing, um, we wanted to give you just an update on the key revenue sources. Um, Mega, do you want to share that slide again? Sorry about that. That's okay. Um, as you all know, we've been looking at revenue sources pretty much week to week. Um, but I'm going to show you a slide, which is the same slide that we looked at at the second quarter. Um, and you'll see that the two categories that are highlighted in blue, real estate, 
property taxes and earned income taxes. Those are our two biggest revenue sources and we are doing pretty well on both of them. Um, the EIT is tracking right on budget. We actually are even projecting uh, that we're gonna get in a little bit more than budget, believe it or not. Um, some other municipalities are experiencing this as well. Um, one, one factor that might uh, be contributing to this is that those uh, folks in our community that worked in the city of Philadelphia that may be, can, may be teleworking right now, their um, income tax may be coming to Middletown rather than going to the city of Philadelphia. Um, but we're tracking right on for EIT. Real estate taxes, we're, we're tracking very close as well. As you can see, the big problem here for us from a revenue standpoint is the amusement tax. And that is uh, Sesame Place because they um, have not had the number of ticket sales and number of folks moving through their park. Uh, e the amusement tax is uh, going to, will take about a $1.2 million hit this year from amusement tax. And then as you look across the other categories, things are spread out, real estate transfer and mercantile are still really questionable because uh, we just don't know what's gonna happen over the next three months. So we'll keep an eye on them. We're trying to be conservative. Bottom line right now is we're looking at about 3.1, 3.2 million less than we originally budgeted. This number is better than it was three months ago. So we started talking about this in, uh, in April when we did a first quarter report. It was a big question mark what COVID was gonna do to our revenues. Then in July, we thought that this number was gonna be about $3.5 million in July. So we're down to, to 3.191. Um, I do want to share that as we put together the first draft of the budget, again, we'll be talking about this in a couple of weeks, but as Megan noted on her prior slides, we are, do, you know, we really um, have seen that all of the departments are doing a really good job trying to keep costs down. And I do believe that the um, end of 2020 projection is probably going to be about a, an overall $2 million hit when you look at the loss of revenues compared to the reduction of expenditure, expenditures and, you know, plus a couple of other rev revenue categories um, that aren't on this list. So um, we'll keep an eye on it and um, hopefully the numbers will just uh, keep getting better. Any questions for me? Mr. Tosti. Can the, um, the public safety and um, with the fire inspections and the police, is that related to the COVID? And are we gonna get any reimbursements from the county on any of that? Um, well, we, so the public safety police are fines that are down. Uh -huh. And I would say, yes, that's related to COVID. The fire protection permits, um, and building and zoning permits are down because of COVID, yes. Um, we don't have an expectation that we're gonna get any type of income from grants, whether it's the county or Pima or FEMA for lost revenue, but we do have, um, we have submitted for the money that we spent specifically for COVID. And I think that number was about 250,000 the last time I looked at it. So we haven't gotten it yet, but we have applied to both the, you know, state and federal emergency management grants and to the county. So we'll hopefully be hearing something soon on those two. Thanks. Okay, that's all, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Dioli Cools. And I, just one comment. I mean, clearly we are, you know, going to take um, a hit as a result of COVID. Um, albeit, um, if trends continue, it looks like it won't be as dire as we feared when we first started looking at this back in April. Um, but I also, and I also just want to commend all of the department heads, Ms. Dioli Cools, and your staff for all the efforts that everybody has made to really. Um, rein in expenses and try to conserve money 
um, anticipating that it was going to be a rough year because um, you know the, the fact that this is going to be hopefully not as grim as we had feared is, is certainly due to tax revenues being a little rosier than we had feared, but also to the efforts of, of all the staff to um, um, really sort of um, rein in some of the spending. So I, kudos to all of them for all their efforts in doing that. It's really appreciated by the board. Okay, thank you, Ms. Dioli Cools. Thank you, Ms. Bendari, for the financial report. Next on the agenda is the discussion of the 2020 and 2021 capital plan. Uh, Ms. Dioli Cools, do you want to introduce this? Uh, yeah, absolutely. So each year around this time, we like to present to the board the proposed capital plan that uh, you will be making decisions on during the budget workshop. So tonight is a purely informational presentation. So you can hear from the department directors on what, um, what projects are being proposed. Um, I'm not sure who's handling the slides, but I think I have the first couple of slides. Um, so first to report on the 2020 capital plan, the original budget was 6.6 .6 million. Um, we did, as we have been talking about, we have um, delayed projects and deferred projects because of the pandemic. And we have only prioritized, you know, sort of urgent infrastructure needs. So we will be um, at 4 million by the end of the year. This just gives you an overview of where that was spent and also shows you that of the 4 million projected by the end of the year, that is offset by $870,000 in grant revenue. And I'll turn it over to the chief now um, on the uh, police capital items. Thank you, Ms. Tioli Cools. Um, I'm gonna fly through this. Uh, first, we have our vehicles. So our vehicles are all replacements. Most of what's on our capital budget are either replacements or deferments, uh, projects we've been deferring for a while or uh, normal replacements. Our four uh, marked vehicles are gonna replace four that we're putting out of service. Two ATVs are gonna replace two that we're putting out of service. And one of our motorcycles is getting uh, very high mileage is gonna need to be put out of service. Uh, in 2021 as well. And two of those three purchases are going, being requested through the RDA. So I'm following along on my computer here. Uh, the interview room camera is uh, something, again, we've needed this for quite a while. We're one of the few departments in Bucks County where we don't record interviews with uh, suspects and victims and witnesses. Uh, so 2021 is probably the year for us to get on board joining the other 40 departments in the county that do. That's a very small cost project. The next is the storage shed, which we have put off for a couple of years. This will free some space in our evidence garage um, and uh, allow us to put our motorcycles, ATVs and bicycles in the storage shed. Next is the kennel. So this is a very important project for us. This is uh, one of those things we had a kennel and then we let it go and now we desperately need one. Uh, there's really three issues when it comes to the kennel. One is if we find a stray dog and it's, it's owned by someone locally, we normally could tell. We have nowhere to temporarily store it for a day or two. So we have to bring uh, the pup all the way up to Lahaska, uh, which creates an inconvenience and the person has to drive all the way up there. Second issue we have is sometimes on medical emergencies and different kinds of calls, there's a pet involved. There's no one to take the pet. Our animal control officer can, uh, but we have nowhere, we don't have a kennel to store a dog or a cat if we have to take one. And, and uh, the SPCA will not accept dogs under those conditions. And then third is uh, sometimes dogs are deemed dangerous dogs by a judge. And by law, we're supposed to store those dogs. Again, the SPCA won't take them. Um, and we don't, we have nowhere to store them. So I think a kennel is a very good investment for us. It's gonna be on site. So it'll be constantly supervised and our DPW will help us with most of the work. So we're trying to keep the cost as minimal as possible. We handle four to 500 animal calls a year. 
I think a kennel is something that we're going to need in 2021. And information technology is just us swapping out um, in-car computers for ones that are getting old, trying to keep up with about five per year. Next is our cell phone technology. Again, this is something that a lot of departments around us have and we don't. Uh, the issue with this is really timeliness. We get a warrant sometimes to get information from a cell phone and we have no way to retrieve it. And a lot of times it's very critical to us in investigations, especially in this day and age, when just about every transaction that everyone does in some way or another is related to a cell phone. So again, this is technology that we could really use. And I think that's it for me. Yes. Does the board have any questions? Okay, thank you. Thanks, Chief. Okay. Hello. Um, so we are currently util utilizing about 75% of our storage on our SAN. Um, so this is for additional hard drives to add to it. Along with all of our servers are plugged into a UPS. Uh, UPSs are running about six years old and um, I've experienced already with uh, certain power outages that it only keeps up our system up for about three minutes. So we're in dire need of replacing our battery backups, uh, the UPSs. Um, desktop replacements, five-year program, as I mentioned last year, we have uh, computers that need to be replaced as well as one thing with the pandemic that happened this year and everything with the fire marshals, um, we didn't have enough laptops and I was scrambling and getting laptops. So we wanna uh, move the whole fire marshals department to laptops. And that'll be about 25,000. Next. Um, we're gonna move the fire, fire and emergency management to Tracer, as well as Park and Rex to a new registration system. The cost of that is about 18,000. Next, please. Uh, so last year we did an initiative for document scanning to go paperless. Um, we held off this year because of the pandemic. So we're looking to start it uh, next year, as well as this is one of the reasons why I would need additional storage on our SAN for uh, our drives. Next. And public works. Um, currently, we have 10 iPads for them. We need additional 10 more iPads so all the employees can have their iPads when they go out to do their uh, work for their tickets. And that's it. Does the board have any questions? All right. Thank you. This is Paul from Parks and Recreation. I'm just going to leave my camera off and just talk to the group. Um, the comprehensive plan for Parks and Recreation, which really drills into the parks and how people use them, uh, was last done in 2005. Now that the township has done its overall comprehensive plan, um, we're looking forward as this is a good time for us to update that plan. The uh, barn at Community Park uh, needs a new roof. This, this facility is probably responsible for over three, uh, three quarters of our, you know, 400,000 plus income. So it's vital that we keep this uh, up and operational. It'll be um, roof, gutters, fascia, the whole works. Tree remediation for 30,000 will be a perennial cost right now. The emerald dashboard and the spotted lantern fly are on our list and we assume the world being the world, there will be a new one, new picture up there soon. The Queen Anne Creek Greenway replanting. This is $10,000 that we already brought into the township. The PICO grant was already paid. Um, it was supposed to be a volunteer effort in the COVID arena. We're just going to uh, pay a landscaper or contractor to complete the work along the uh, Mill Creek in between the Queen Anne Creek and Cobalt Ridge neighborhoods. For Scythia Crossing Park is uh, two different uh, projects. The first is, as you can see in the upper left corner, um, the surfacing on the rink needs to be updated. There's some other holes and some other patches that need to be done. What we're hoping for is that the Department of Public Works did a fabulous job with the two basketball courts 
at uh, firefighters park. So we're hoping that they could use their expertise on this court. And then we're also looking at uh, potentially upgrading to uh, LED lighting so that in the fall season, when everybody really wants to start playing roller hockey and street hockey, um, they can do so. Uh, the downside right now is that it turns dark at five o'clock and they don't have a chance to play during the week. So um, those are the two items for Forsythia Crossing Park. And the Twin Oaks Park lighting, the, um, there's two different projects here. The first is redoing the, what we call the Babe Ruth Field, which is also known as the 90 foot field at Twin Oaks Park. All the lighting, as you can see, is the old telephone pole, high pressure sodium, half of them don't work. Um, to upgrade that to a newer uh, LED lighting system that gives us uh, more cost control, remote lighting, turn on, turn off. And the um, we estimate that's gonna be about $300,000. And then the remaining is going to be um, starting to remediate some of the strain, uh, drain water issues that we have down in that uh, area. And I believe that's it for me. Good evening, board. The first thing on fire and emergency services is a comprehensive fire study. This is one thing that was planned for 2020, but deferred till 2021. Um, and it's going to basically assess the current conditions and do an analysis of fire response uh, in the township. Second of the projects is our uh, air packs are at the end of their life cycle. So next year, uh, six of the, the packs that we use to go into uh, hazardous environments are going to have to be put out of service. The third of our projects is uh, AEDs, which are used uh, when somebody is in cardiac arrest to try and shock them back into a survivable rhythm. Uh, the AEDs that we currently have are no longer compatible with the uh, heart monitors that the rescue squad has, which they just replaced this current year. And that's the end of my projects. Thank you. Good evening. I'll continue with uh, buildings and grounds information. And uh, we're first going to talk about the municipal building generator phase two. We've recently installed a new generator, which has a 230 kilowatt capacity, replacing the old generator at 175 kilowatts. The municipal center circuits are only about one third on the current generator. This will include a detailed load study to find out what circuits are available that we might move over to the generator. So when we are without power, more of the building would receive power and we could continue to stay productive and under a, a, a safe environment. And this was originally planned for 2020 and we're hoping the board will consider it for 2021. With the broadcast system, the current broadcast server is now over seven years old. Uh, it is an analog standard definition signal. Our new switches and cameras are all high definition and we're streaming to the web high definition but the process now involves us downgrading the signal to be able to run it um, over the, the television and to um, post it on our website. So the nurse, new server will be the last um, upgrade to bring our whole system into high def. And uh, the third item I have tonight is the security and surveillance camera system. The system is uh, predominantly 11 years old with the exception of the cell block area where the cameras there are original to the building and they are approaching 20 years old. The cameras are old um, analog cameras. The resolution that they give us is really not very good. If uh, an incident were to happen in our parking lot, we don't even have the ability to zoom in and get a license plate or to see uh, details to be able to use the footage to um, take care of anything that might happen. And we have cameras throughout the building and this would replace all of the cameras with a new um, high def system. 
Any questions? Thank you. Good evening. It's Eric from Middle, yeah, Public Works Department. Um, I have um, the first slide that we're going to be doing is the neighborhood sign program. Uh, we started in 2019 uh, with our sign program. Unfortunately, this past year, we um, decided to defer it uh, due to the situation at hand. So we're looking in 2021 um, to restart doing the sign program again. And approximate cost is 125,000. And that would include uh, 50 of the uh, neighborhood signs and 10 park signs. Uh, we are asking from uh, Public Works uh, this year, we're asking for one 10 ton dump truck, one six ton dump truck, and one utility truck to be replaced. Um, all these vehicles were put in for RDA grants. Um, the estimated cost is 404,000 uh, for those vehicles. Uh, moving on with the equipment, um, the double wing mower um, is something we're looking into. Um, also, the, the landscape trailer and a utility vehicle, uh, which is a side-by-side -side to help with the snow and ice removal of the sidewalks. Um, just to point out that the landscape trailer and the side-by-side uh, -side vehicle were not purchased this year. We held off on that, and that's why you see it in this year um, again. And we're estimating a cost of 90000 for that. Um, the snow plow uh, slash broom attachment is something else um, we wanted to look at um, to help us with the sidewalks. Um, with the broom attachment, we can use that more than the snow plow itself. So that's what we're looking at. Um, and this would be an asset once again to help us with our um, snow removal uh, operations. Uh, the Forsythia Bridge. Uh, in, in Levittown here. Um, right currently, the bri one bridge is out, um, and that is um, from Snowball to Forsythia. Um, Pat Ennis and myself have been working um, on plans and reaching out to um, bidders uh, for a new bridge. Um, just so you know, um, we are planning on taking the bridge out in 2020 and having it replaced in 2021. Um, also, we're looking for a second uh, bridge to be replaced, which would be Cobalt in the Quincy. And um, all the work would be done by uh, the staff at DPW, um, the prep work and the insulation for this project. And you're looking at a cost of 110,000. Um, next is uh, public works down here at our yard. Um, our tanks are coming to the end of their life cycle. And um, with that, um, we are looking to get the tanks out of the ground, uh, obviously for environmental reasons and to put them above ground. Um, so that would be one of the phases. Um, along with that um, is some preparation for planning and uh, some renovation uh, to the DPW itself. So that would need to be looked at also along with that project. Um, the tanks themselves are approximately 350,000 um, to have removed and have new ones uh, replaced. Intersections, um, every year um, we do a lot of in-house um, thermoplastic and painting. Um, we leave this in here for bigger intersections that we're not comfortable doing yet um, for our major intersections. So sometimes um, we will contract out to have some of the painting done. And that's why that figure is left in there. Um, with the paving, uh, we are in our ninth year of the 14 year program. Um, we, we work on this, uh, Pat Ennis, Isaac, myself, uh, we all get together kind of and uh, work on this project. Uh, we take a comprehensive look at what areas need to be paved. And we've been trying to include all the uh, drainage that needs to be done, uh, whether it be drain pipes, inlets, um, or uh, handicap ramps. So we would like to get the program together um, so it follows that order uh, in the future. 
this is a project we started back in 2019. Um, it was just with the uh, LED lighting to switch all the um, buildings over. Um, this past year, we did some, uh, not, not a lot because of what was going on. And uh, in 2021, we would like to finish um, with this project. Estimated cost is like around 11,000 um, to do the rest of the buildings. And also with this, you do get a rebate for the material that we're buying to change over to the LED lighting. So we do save a little bit there. Um, street signs is something that um, we, we started. Um, and then we sort of got away from it a little bit. Um, the idea with this is to, to replace street signs that are damaged uh, or wore out. And uh, we got a lot of feedback from the uh, emergency services. They like having um, the blocks uh, numbers. Uh, so if you pull in, you know, 500 blocks to the right, you know, 100 blocks to the left. Uh, it helps them out, especially at night. And uh, we would like to get back to uh, starting to replace um, some of these signs. Um, also, I would like to start um, with this as sections get paved. Uh, you know, we get new concrete um, aprons, you know, for the handicap, the road gets paved. It'll be nice to have new, newer signs in the sections also. And that all would be done in house with our staff. Uh, this is something that's been kicked around a little bit. Um, I'm looking to uh, install a somewhere in the north end a uh, salt bin um, that can be utilized, obviously, for the winter operations. Um, it, it becomes a hassle or a problem when you, you know, try to get back to to our shop down here, down in the lower half of the township to get reloaded for salt. Um, so, you know, one of the things is, you know, hopefully that would save us time, save us money. Uh, with the amount of trips and everything back to our yard. And um, it would help with our salting operations that they could get loaded up up there and be right back out on the road within, you know, 10 minutes, 15 minutes compared to an hour coming back here and then trying to get back up to where they need to be. Um, there are five trucks that can be utilized from that site um, that we, we think uh, we could use to reload out of that site. So it's something we were looking into for um, this coming year. Uh, Tommy, uh, talking with Tommy from our shop, our head mechanic, um, he had said that um, he was in need of a new air conditioning machine, which uh, regenerates the uh, air conditioning in the vehicles. Um, so there's two different types. Um, all our new, newer vehicles take a special type and then, of course, we have the other older type. So, um, you know, as it says in a slide here, you know, almost half of the employees drive vehicles for the township. Um, right now, he sends them back to the dealer, which is time consuming when it could be a 20 minute fix. It turns into, uh, you know, police having their cars down for either a day or having to switch vehicles or whatever. So that is something that uh, he had asked for, which I'm asking uh, tonight to consider. The stump grinder is something that also uh, we kicked around um, for a little while, um, mainly because the only way uh, we can actually, after cutting the trees down, uh, we either have to dig them out or I have to sub it out, which gets costly. Uh, and especially uh, in the parks uh, by the playgrounds, it, it's just more of a hazard. So we were thinking about, um, you know, looking into um, as we remove trees uh, in, in the areas that really are critical um, to uh, remove the stumps also. So that is a, um, the reason why you see this slide. Um, this slide, um, it, it, it combines a couple different things. Um, there, there's a couple components to this. So um, the one thing is, um, we would like to put indicators on the traffic boxes um, to show when the power comes back on from Pico um, and, and not guess um, is really what it is. Right now we go out there and, you know, we wait for the traffic to die down a little bit and we unplug it. If the light stays on, hey, the power's back on. 
Um, it, it's not a good habit to do that, obviously. Um, and, you know, we want to get with the times. Uh, not a lot of other townships have it. So that is one thing we're looking to do. Um, also, uh, we don't have enough generators. Um, they're actually put out at all the traffic lights. And um, I, I understand that you can't have every light covered in the township, but I think it's kind of important to make sure we have the right equipment and to power the major intersections, uh, especially when the police are you know, busy doing their calls and can't really be out there for traffic control. Um, the other thing is we have some older generators that need to get replaced. And um, with the older generators, when we hook them up to the traffic lights, um, sometimes we have issues because of the uh, components in the traffic light are, themselves um, are more sensitive now than they were before. So that is another uh, reason asking for these generators. And the other reason is um, they can be used for other functions, obviously, um, once we get back to normal times um, that, you know, for events that, that the parks might have or the police or whoever, fire marshal's office, that the generators will be there to use also for them. So it's a, it's a combination of three or four different things uh, put, it, put together in one slide. Uh, the preemption, preemption system, um, this is a system that is used by all the emergency um, uh, people uh, in the township, fire, police, ambulance. Um, so lately uh, we have preemption systems that are older and no longer can be sent out to be repaired. Um, it's past their, their lifespan, so new ones need to be added. Um, so we, we put in money um, to start looking at some of these preemption uh, systems and to maybe uh, start, you know, doing gradually, um, you know, on the main intersections and make sure they're up and running and stuff like that. Does anybody have any questions? Yeah, I have a question for you. The um, the salt barn caught my eye. Where would you put that at, uh, Mr. Gartmeyer, in the northern end of the township if you're looking to do something like that? Because I know how much of a hassle that can be coming back, like you said. Uh, and I was just kind of curious on where you were looking to do that. At. Um, one of the sites is at the North Station, since we keep our trucks right there. And since we own the land right there, um, right behind the fire company, Rescue Squad, we do have a barn up there. So it would be up in that area. Um, the idea was, um, you know, in October or whenever, we would fill the, fill the bin up ourselves. And at the end of the season, we would remove all that um, salt and bring it back to our main building down here to be stored. So that building will only get used for the winter months and get cleaned out after winter. Is there any other questions? Just just curious, why would you be moving it back instead of just leaving it there over the um, over the summer uh, because, months? Because one thing, um, it, it's really not designed um, what we were going to do. It's not a quote unquote full blown um, salt bin. Um, the, the bin we have down here is undercover. So that way, and the second thing is, so we don't have any problems with the salt sitting out there or anything um, of that nature with, with the weather and stuff with the salt running or anything like that, you know, from the, from the rain or whatever. Okay, thank you. Um, the next couple of slides, if there's no other uh, questions, uh, Pat Ennis will be taking care of the rest of the slides for um, Public Works and thank you for your time. Thank you, Eric. Um, so going on to um, transportation signals, um, we're looking at the Swift Road Woodburn intersection and widening that uh, for safety, uh, putting in a left turn lane uh, on Swift Road to head north on Woodburn Road. Uh, that would include striping, uh, widening, and uh, some grading to improve site distance there. Uh, we would look to include that in the, um, the road program next year. Uh, and again, um, going back to the handicap program, um, we're going to continue that, trying to stay ahead of the road uh, road program to keep the um, ADA compliance going uh, into the future and trying to stay ahead of the paving. Uh, and again, like we said, we would be including that too with the road programs going forward. 
Uh, and then we do have some storm uh, drainage programs. Um, the Langhorn Gables program uh, is out to bid right now. Uh, so we should be hearing on that soon. Uh, we do have Richardson Avenue and Hillside Avenue, which Remington and Vernick are working on uh, to get those out um, hopefully sometime next year for some uh, the drainage, drainage improvements needed out there. Uh, REITS Avenue is a culvert rehabilitation that we're handling in-house here with uh, Public Works and my office. Uh, and there are the, the storm sewer pro, uh, projects we're looking uh, in the near future. Um, and then next slide. Uh, and then we also, um, in keeping with the uh, Department of Public Works, we've been doing a lot of emergency drainage repairs uh, that we've been handling ourselves. Uh, they've been pipe uh, replacements, inlet repairs, uh, replacing inlet um, castings and hoods, uh, and also some um, pipe settlement that we've noticed throughout the township. And we'll continue um, doing those as we as we they come up and as we get complaints in some areas. And then uh, with that, I'll turn it back over to our manager, Stephanie Teely Cools, for uh, the summary. Thanks, Pat. Uh, so this shows you the overall proposed 2021 capital improvement program, total 5.8 million. Um, the next slide shows you an overview of 2020 budget in blue, um, projected 2020 in red, and then what we're proposing in 2021. So you can see most of those red numbers, uh, red bars, excuse me, uh, significantly lower than the blue ones. Um, so again, this is informational and we will uh, be discussing these items and the capital improvement plan in the context of the 2021 budget workshop sessions and the board will have the opportunity to prioritize. Um, as usual, we'll ask the department heads to take all of the items that they proposed this evening and break them into priority one and priority two categories for the board ahead of time. So if, uh, if there are any questions, I'm happy to answer them at this point. Thanks to everyone for uh, all the work that they put into the, uh, the presentation tonight. Thank you very much, Ms. Tioli Cools. Um, can everyone hear me okay? I had a technology glitch. Okay, thank you. Um, and thank you to all the directors for um, the thorough presentations. We look forward to talking about each of these items in more detail at the upcoming uh, budget sessions later this month. And so with that, that takes us to the public comment section of the meeting. This is public comment on non-agenda items. We know that we have at least one. So if Mr. Valla um, wants to let that resident back in, we can start with her. Uh, you are muted, ma'am. Okay, here we go. Okay, thanks. there you go. If you could if you don't mind, just state your name and address sure, one more time. No for problem. Us. My name is Donna Salvucci, and I'm at 144 Pine Glen in Swan Point, Langhorn. Okay, so um, thanks for the opportunity to listen to me tonight. Um, so um, I'm here and to represent Swan Point with regard to the intersection at Swift and Woodbourne. So I appreciate hearing that there's some consideration of the change to that intersection. So I've been representing the, um, the development since 2018 with the concerns um, to the township of the many years of accidents that have occurred there. And I appreciate the township has done a lot of work since 2018 and looking at police data um, and capturing safety data um, through kind of hitting cameras. And I had attended a meeting where there was review of all of that information with um, traffic engineers who had determined that the only solution um, was a traffic light that would be coordinated with uh, the traffic lights at Woodbourne and the bypass and Woodbourne and Ellis. Um, since that time, of course, that was 2018. Now we're looking at the 2021 budget. There's been no changes. And I understand the pandemic last year, and I've listened to certainly the budget impact, and I can certainly appreciate that. Um, so I, I hear that the one change is proposed, and I know you're going to be working in the workshops. 
Um, I, I'll just say, I mean, there have been deaths over the years at that intersection. There are many accidents. Um, I live across from the water basin. Besides the accidents, I hear the near misses all the time, the screeching tires all the time at that intersection. It is a very, very dangerous intersection. So uh, I will say at this point, our, we have a Swamp Point website, Facebook, I'm sorry, Facebook um, site. And um, you know, our development is really kind of at wit's end. Uh, we have first responders in the development that are always at these accidents way before the township first responders. And so it's been a few years. Um, we were told we'd have a light in, in 2019 if you go back and look at your records. So we really are frustrated as citizens. Um, we've been very patient. We worked a long time with Scott Sadowski. Um, I've attended meetings. I've been many emails back and forth. Now I'm working with Nick. So I'm not sure what to do. So I'm bringing this back to the township and letting you know that we are committed to doing whatever we need to do and working with all of you. But um, it's very, very dangerous and you have all the data, um, you have all the studies, you have the engineer's recommendation for a traffic light. Um, and I'm glad to continue to work with the committee and the capital budget and refresh any of the information that you might need regarding the intersection there. Um, thank you very much, Ms. Savucci, for um, coming tonight on behalf of your neighbors and bringing this to our attention. It certainly is an issue that um, we are aware of and one that is, as you just heard, um, being considered as part of the um, capital plan for 2021. That plan in, involves road improvements. Um, it did not, at least as detailed tonight, involve the um, uh, implementation of a traffic signal at that location. Um, a, a couple of things, and um, obviously, um, the board you're now sitting in front of is different than the board, or at least some of the members are different than the board um, as it existed in 2018. And yeah, so for, for some people, this is the first time they're having an opportunity to, to um, be involved with this issue. For, so for that reason, I appreciate you coming back in person uh, to explain. The, the other thing I can tell you is that, um, you know, we did look at um, very recently the data on the accidents um, at that location, um, and I and I um, our one of our um, police officers, actually Captain Captain Pete Feeney, um, indicated the data, which has um, three reported accidents in 2018, four in 2019, and three so far in 2020. Um, that, that's not to say, as you suggested, that there could be other what you call near misses um, that don't turn into reportable accidents. So we're aware that there are others that might not be caught up in that data. But that's something that we take into consideration when we think about um, the, the expense that would be involved in adding a new traffic signal and also how a new traffic signal is gonna impact traffic flow in the area. So I'll, I'll give um, you know, any other board members an opportunity to speak to this issue if they want. And certainly I wanna make it clear to you that this is not a resolved issue. This is something we're still talking about and still dealing with. Certainly right now as we move into the budget session because it's something that we're, we're considering. But to be completely candid with you, at this point what we're contemplating or at least what's been proposed to us is um, road widening and road improvements, not a new traffic signal. Okay. So just I'll just add that historically when Scott and I worked uh, with the police department, there were um, attempts to go back many years to find the deaths that were associated with the intersection and a combination of data records that were combined from both sides of Woodward Road. It's Swift on the one side and I don't recall the name of the street on the other side, I'm sorry. Um, and they had to look and pull the data from both sides of the intersection. And they went back many years and they were able to pool all of that data across the many years. And that's where the impressions were made by the engineer that said that that was the only um, solution. So looking at three years is not probably gonna be representative of the danger associated with it. And there was also over that time that you're talking about a flashing uh, speed indicator um, that was put up for several months during that time to bring awareness to people as they're driving at their speed. Um, so, just to give you some real-time information, 
Um, there was a lot of work that was done before over the past two years that would not account for an, a, a total of 10 accidents. So um, I'd be glad to give more information and share some of the, I think Nick has all of the detailed emails from Scott before he left. So yeah, there's a lot more data that the township has available to it. Okay, thank you. Mr. Tosti. I've seen um, that it, in one of the emails that this went to the uh, traffic commission a few times. What was the resolution that came out of the traffic commission? What was their suggestion? Let's see the link. Do we lose her, Nick? You're, you're muted. I'm sorry, I didn't realize you were talking to me. Yeah, I, I've seen in one of your emails that you sent um, that this has went in front of our traffic commission a few times. Um, what was so, the resolution or what was the recommendation out of the traffic commission? Yeah, so when it started, there was a point where you're in, you were without an engineer, contracted engineer group. And it took some time for an engineer group to came up, come on board. And I was at the meeting where the engineer group did come on board after a very long review of, of data from the police department. And it took a long time to kind of pull data from two different data sets. And, and anyway, and the engineer at that meeting, and I probably could find the date, said that the only solution, there were two engineers, traffic engineers, the only solution considering all of the data and after they did the, uh, the traffic study with the light, with the information, I guess the uh, computer chips in the, in the trees near the intersection, however they captured that data, the only solution was a traffic light and widening the, um, the entrances there. So um, that's recorded in your meeting minutes. I'm quite sure I'd have to find the date. Um, so I don't know if you still have the same traffic engineers. It was probably a year and a half or so ago. So, I mean, I, I've seen in your suggestion too that it would be a timed light with the bypass light. Uh, is that yeah. The, I mean, because it would, the intersection is so close to the bypass right. there. Um, right. That it would really, I mean, I don't know what he said about traffic as far as tying up traffic even more there in that intersection. Because I know the way exactly. he gets in the morning uh, going into the bypass, not, not as much coming home, but going in the morning. Yeah, that, that actually was discussed at great length and that was a concern. And he talked about that that would be, I, I may be wrong, but I think he discussed like fiber optically connected, that might not be the right term, um, but that there would be a, some kind of computerized timing with the light at Ellis and Woodbourne and he um, up to the bypass, those three lights would be working together in conjunction and would actually deal with some of the speeding that. Um, causes some of the accidents where the speedy folks come up Woodbourne and start speeding and also would help to deal with moving the traffic along um, because it got, does get backed up at Woodbourne going on to the bypass. So I know I thought the same thing, wow, that's like two lights back to back, kind of like when you're going to route one around um, Maple Avenue, you get those two lights around Dunkin' Donuts back to back. Um, and he said he actually thought, the engineers actually thought the timing because of whatever electronic system or computerized system, that it would move traffic more um, readily or maybe more safely. I'm not exactly sure, but it, again, it's all in the, I'm sure you record the meetings, I imagine, or the meeting minutes that would reflect that. Thanks. You're welcome. I think, Ms. Salvucci, I mean, one of the things we need to do, this current board, is go back and look at what you're talking about, because sure. I think, you know, one of the things that I'm not clear on is whether the traffic engineer was proposing options or whether he was actually recommending that the changes were, you know, A, warranted and B, appropriate for the location. Um, sure. and, I, and I just think, I think we need to go back and look at it again. Um, okay. And, and we will. And, and so I, you know, I don't want you to think that we don't consider this an important issue because we do. I mean, obviously, the fact that we're discussing it in the upcoming budget sessions as part of the capital plan shows that it's a priority. It's a, it, the question, I think, is what, what is the appropriate thing to do about it? Um, and I think we have, we have to weigh a few different things. We need to talk to um, our police department and, and our
car traffic engineer and look at the same data that you're referencing. And, um, you know, we can do this a couple of different ways. We can certainly, you can continue to, to communicate with Mr. Bala. Um, you're free to communicate with any of the board members directly, and you're free to come to the upcoming budget sessions when we're, you know, talking about these issues in a more open sort of roundtable format. Great. So, and then would Nick Valla, would he keep me um, up to date? Like, how would I know when those, when the appropriate meetings are happening? Yeah, so um, I can tell you that there are two coming up. It's October 19th and October 26th. They're both Mondays and both are going to be at seven o'clock. And there'll be more details on the township website, but I can certainly ask Nick to email you directly and provide you with all the information. Okay, great. Thank you so much. I appreciate your time. Can I ask one more question? Sure. The, the speeding going into the traffic, is that coming up to the bypass or people coming off the bypass and coming down towards Maple Point? Yeah, my understanding from the, um, the traffic study that was conducted and it was conducted for both speed and um, traffic flow when they did the hidden cameras and the speed capture that from that intersection, the, my understanding was the speed was um, coming from Ellis Road up um, towards the bypass. Thanks. Yeah, you're welcome. So, Mr. Chairman, I'm getting some suggestions from our staff that your audio is actually a little problematic. Would you be comfortable with me jumping in and facilitating the last couple residents here? I was just going to suggest it. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Uh, Nick, who else do we have on tap here? We have Ms. O'Brien coming in now. Great. Hi, Ms. O'Brien, can you, we can't hear you yet. Go ahead and introduce yourself and state your address for us. It says you're connecting, give it a minute. Give it a minute, it says you're connecting. All right, now you're on mute. How about now? Gotcha. Okay, so I'm Stacey O'Brien and I live at 140 Clear Creek in Road in Swan Point as well. And um, just a couple of things that I wanted to throw out also about that intersection. Um, one of the reasons I'm personally concerned about it, um, I've lived here since I was nine. <laughs> so uh, that was, you know, before the bypass, Double Woods Road, people coming to and from, it was a very slow intersection. But that is where Maple Point and the high school drop off the afternoon students. So if they take a late bus home, that intersection can be very hazardous for children who, because they come uh, from Ellis Road towards the bypass. So kids have to cross Woodburn Road to get back into the development. And that could be very hazardous. Um, and with people speeding in the opposite direction, so off the bypass towards Ellis Road, we had an accident as late as last week where um, we didn't even know if the young lady who got hit in the road survived. So we did find out she did. We don't know what her injuries are, but people are speeding in both directions at this point. Um, I know occasionally a police officer sits at the intersection to make sure people are not turning from Woodburn Road onto the bypass on red, but it might behoove somebody to just sit and hide in the meantime to start getting people to just slow down just a little bit until we can get that traffic light installed. Great, thanks for that additional commentary. Do we have, uh, I think one more resident, Nick? There's one other hand raised, but I believe they have left the meeting, so you're in the clear. Okay, great. I'll wait another couple seconds to see if there is any other public comment uh, via any of our communication methods. Okay, great. Uh, so seeing none, uh, that will close public comment. So we'll move to other business. Uh, Mr. Tosti. Sorry, you're in my upper left. <laughs> I usually go the same way. I take the people and go <laughs> left to right. Uh, I have nothing. Uh, just reminder, everybody, wear your mask and stay safe. Thank you, Ms. Payne. 
I just want to say happy birthday to Sophia again. That was very exciting to hear. Um, and thank you to Kyle and his family. Kyle's a Neshaminy alumni as well. So it's great to see other Neshaminy trying to, alumni trying to make the community a better place. That's all. Wonderful, thank you. And Mr. Kizak, if you want to attempt your audio. I have nothing further. Thank you, Ms. Strauss. Okay, great. Ms. Corporal. I had nothing really. I just wanted to remind everybody Halloween's coming up. Um, I know we had talked about doing it safely. And um, I just wanted to remind everybody to wear their mask, um, do it safe distance, and have a great time. Great, thank you. Uh, Ms. Tila Kools. I have nothing, thank you. And Mr. Esposito. Hey, uh, thank you. I do have a couple, uh, couple things. Uh, first, I wanted to make an announcement that the board held an executive session prior to tonight's meeting to discuss ongoing litigation matters. Uh, the second thing I wanted to discuss was about an upcoming zoning hearing board meeting to be held on October 14th. Um, as the board knows, the township entered into a lease for land it owns that's located at the uh, intersection of South Flowers Mill Road and Lincoln Highway. Uh, the lease is with Premier Media uh, to build a billboard sign on the property. Um, the adjacent landowner uh, and uh, leaseholder filed a, um, an appeal to the issuance of the zoning permit that was issued by the uh, township's building and zoning department. Um, and so that will be heard at the next zoning hearing board meeting. So I'm asking the board to make a motion to send me to the zoning hearing board to support the issuance of the zoning permit by the uh, building and zoning department uh, to Premier Media. Great, thank you. Mr. Tosti? I'll make a motion to send Mr. Esposito to the zoning board meeting. I'll second. Wonderful. Uh, any board questions on this matter? And I'll wait a moment for questions from the public. Okay, seeing none, uh, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor, uh, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Great, thank you. The motion carries 5-0. Mr. Esposito, other matters? Thank you, that's it. Okay, great, thank you so much. Uh, and I guess I'm last. Uh, I just wanted to say thank you again to the township staff for all the work they put into preparing the capital budget. I wanted to remind our residents that while we didn't discuss each item at length, Today, this is a way of us previewing uh, the projects we will consider during our public budgeting sessions that uh, Chairman Kizak announced at the beginning of the meeting. Uh, so those are publicly announced and available for you to attend uh, if you wanna weigh in on any of those capital budget items. Uh, and with that, I will accept a motion for adjournment. Mr. Tosti, second. Second. Great, thank you, Ms. Corporal. Uh, we are adjourned. Thanks everybody. Thank you.